In a quiet little lane off Upper Serangoon Road, far removed from the hustle and bustle of city life, time stands still for father and son. In the silent hours, these guardians of time continue what they consider their sacred work. One that began more than 60 years ago for Mr. Lim Gilam. Yes, Five years later, in 1948, Mr. Lim opened a small stall at four and a half milestone along Upper Serangoon Road. Today, it's his son David and his wife who run the shop, which is the only one in Singapore that specializes in vintage clocks. But it wasn't too long ago that, like his son, David grew up a small boy amidst clocks of all shapes and sizes. Oh, my dad would sit at his work, uh, the table to repair his watch. I would just stand by the side, look at how he strip and dis uh, assemble and disassemble a watch. I used to run to my dad's side and hide from my mom. Right? He wants to cane me. So I just run by the side because while my dad is working on a watch, so uh, he do not want to be disturbed. He can't even uh, move the table he's working at. So that is the safest place. At first, David was unwilling to follow in his father's footsteps. But in the late 1970s, David's love affair with vintage clocks began. As his personal collection grew, and to tap the demand for such clocks from the growing expatriate workforce, David persuaded his father to change the focus of the business and specialize in vintage clocks. Like this gorgeous 1860s English bracket clock, which has a unique fusee-driven mechanism. The mainspring inside this barrel pull pull the uh, fuse to drive the train of gears. Now it's supposed to strike the hour, except that uh, we have taken the movements out from the case, so the gong is off. Since then, David has accumulated many treasures. Some of the clocks that line these walls are more than 150 years old, from turn-of-the-century German box regulators to ornate French mantelpieces. Silent and unassuming, they meekly bear witness to the unrelenting passage of time. To restore the movement of this 1840s French mantelpiece to its pristine glory, a chemical wash helps remove the ravages of the past. But turning back the clock for the trade is not half as easy. The watch repair to this day remains both an intense and somewhat lonely task. The art itself is changing. The watchmakers of Mr. Lim's era did not have the luxury of machines. All they had were their two hands and their ingenuity. 
they are very good in joining things back. They join back in mainspring or balance staff, if it breaks off, the pinion, the pinion breaks off, balance staff, they, it's steel, it's hardened steel. So they went through a fire process to soften the steel, ball a hole and put a steel pinion on. So and uh, they are just as good as original. Right now there's not many people they can they can do it. Today, although he has the option of using a lathe, David still prefers to repair his clocks in that time-tested way, so they can remain as original as possible. This comes from a spring uh, spring driven mechanisms. The spring broke, the teeth broke, and the pinion broke. We plant a new teeth on by uh, sawing a gap. There's one more here. This one, which I have worked on earlier. We saw it and we get another brass material, put it in and saw back and file back the, the teeth. Even after 60 years devoted to keeping time in its rightful place, Mr. Lim's passion still remains. <laughs> The baton may have been passed on, but as to whether or not it continues, the clock's already ticking. Definitely is a dying trade. I was lucky because uh, I grew up from a family who has a lot of clock mechanisms and I have been playing with it and at that time they were rubbish. Now they are antiques and without these clocks to freely practice on, for a new generation this may soon become a lost art.